to Word Studies with Dr. Ray Winston, a powerful and in-depth study of the Word of God. Dr. Ray? Psalm 119.105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, welcome to Word Studies. I am Dr. Ray, and I want to thank God for the opportunity to study with you the ever-living Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Welcome again to Word Studies. On this program, we study in depth the words of God. Recently, we have been studying on the pneumaticon. Pneumaticon, of course, as I said before, is of spiritual things, spiritual matters, things of the spirit in particular. We're going to be looking at something that uh, perhaps uh, is not covered uh, uh, enough. Yeah, We have been speaking of the wise men, the magoi. Magoi, of course, is a Greek word for wise men. Oi, and on the, uh, at the end of a, a, a Greek word, is masculine plural. The syllable oi is what I'm saying, is masculine plural. So if we see magoi rather than magi, maybe singular, ma, ma, well, magi, magi, magi could be plural in English, but in, uh, in, in the Greek language, it would be magoi. That is the plural form of uh, of wise for wise men, yeah, and we have been talking about the wise men. The wise men, remember, were were like astrologers, astrologists, and so forth, like that. And they had studied the stars, and therefore they knew beforehand, perhaps years, perhaps beforehand, that a king was going to be born. Yeah, not only a king, not just an ordinary king. Because there were many kings from Israel, starting with Saul, the first king of Israel, and then David, and of course down through the line, his son, his favorite son Solomon, yeah, was king of Israel. And then, of course, we had many, many, many kings of Israel. After that, they were basically all in the Davidic or David bloodline, yeah, down through the ages. <clears throat> But they were not divine. They were kings, but they were not divine kings. Here, the, the, the wise men, the studiers of the stars, the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac, if you will. And many of you know what the signs of the zodiac is. It, it talks about <clears throat> the different signs that you were perhaps born on, like Virgo, Leo, and so forth like that. Yeah. And many people think that came from the devil. Yeah, that's not true. <clears throat> No, those signs were placed out there by God. Signs, and we're going to see in a moment, because we're going to be talking about some others who were were given signs, if you will, of the birth of Christ, other than the wise men. And, of course, uh, the Magoi. And they were, the wise men, of course, knew about the, the birth of this king before before they actually started to travel to the west or to Jerusalem area to find out where. Yeah, they knew that he was going to be born. They knew he was going to be in the west. And he was going to be the king of the Jews. They knew all of those things based on the stars, believe it or not. That, that based on the stars, they knew this. <clears throat> And uh, they had traveled. They were they were they traveled there. Now we have to realize th their trip was after Jesus had been born. Yes, because Jesus was like between uh, I don't know uh, three months, if you will, and uh, two years old. Because that twin, remember Herod? Herod killed all the babies in the land in and around Bethlehem that were two years all of the male children that is that were two years old and under so he knew that Jesus had to be in that uh, general if you will age bracket so that the wise men got there of course uh, we don't know exactly how old he was but we know he was somewhere probably a year old or more or something like that and not a baby but a young child if you will Okay, now, <clears throat> we know this because we talked about it, yes? And we talked about the fact of the matter that they were following a star, yeah? They call that star the star of Bethlehem, yeah? And uh, they were following that star, and it, uh, history has it that there were three wise men. But that was based primarily on the gifts that they gave, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
Yes, but it's not, as Sammy Davis Jr. would say, it's not necessarily so that there were only uh, three wise men. <clears throat> because in the Eastern culture, in some countries, they say there were 12. Well, we don't know exactly how many there were, but we know that there were wise men. Yeah, because the Bible says it. And uh, we can uh, add our the, the, the number. And, of course, basing it on the fact that they gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which is three gifts, so we say they're okay, three, three wise men. And, 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 of course, there are a lot of historical evidence. One of them is that uh, they were from three different continents, if you will, uh, <clears throat> Europe, Asia, and Africa. Yeah. Okay. So now we know that we've got that down. We know that we know that we know that those wise men knew about it even before the people that we're going to talk about uh, today. Now, in your Bible, you can turn to the book of Luke if you will. If you got a Bible, turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter two. As a matter of fact, and we're going to look at some others who were also <clears throat> given signs of the birth of, 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 of Jesus. Yes. Notice Matthew chapter 2, and verse 1. Notice, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. Now, Caesar was the king, the, was the, the greatest king, uh, the greater king. You know, he's not the greatest king. Of course, Jesus is the greatest king. But Caesar was the most powerful the mo in the earth realm in those days. Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. In other words, he wanted to count the people. Why did he want to count the people? Does anybody know why he wanted to count everybody? Because they collected taxes from the people. That We do the same thing today, yes? Every, I don't know how often it is that uh, they take a census. It's like every three years or so, five years, maybe, or whatever it is. Yeah, some of you already know <clears throat> that we take a census in this country. Yeah, count the people. We don't know how many people we have here so that we know that we know that we're getting the, the uh, somewhere ar around the correct amount of taxes. Yeah, and the government will know how much, how much money they can expect to bring in and, and then misuse, if you will. Well, Caesar was the same thing. He wanted to count the people. Said, "Said, you know, I'm not getting enough money, perhaps, uh, in taxes, so therefore I'm going to count the people. Now, <clears throat> you might think that uh, Matthew would have been one of the ones who would uh, have been well aware of this, uh, of this census, right? But Matthew didn't talk about it. The, the reason why I say that is because Matthew was a tax collector, Yes. So I guess Matthew said, well, you know, I'm going to stay out of this thing, you know, but Luke noted it, notice <clears throat> in verse two, this census was took, this census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. Quirinius was one of the governors in, 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 in the area of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Now, when they say his own city, that's the place where they were born at, yes? <clears throat> and, of course, notice verse 3, 4, that is, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea. Well, okay, the, Joseph was born in, the, uh, in and around Judea, uh, as a matter of fact, the, the city of Bethlehem, if you will. Okay, into uh, Judea. To the city of David, what's the city of David? Notice, which is called Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem has another name. Yes, in the Hebrew, Bethlehem means what? House of bread. Yeah, house of bread is Bethlehem. Now, we know that Jesus said himself in, in, in John chapter 6, I am the bread that came, came down from heaven. Yes. Remember, uh, the, the Jews, when they were wandering around in the wilderness uh, and God uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I, I want to say toss bread down from heaven, yeah, but bread was brought down from heaven to feed the Jews. Well, that was called manna, if you will. It was kind of sweet. It was, it tasted good, you know. Uh, like when you get to heaven, you think, well, okay, are they going to have bacon and eggs there for breakfast or something or other like that? Or are they going to have something better, if you will? Yeah, it's going to be better than, you know, your best breakfast, your best dinner, or your 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 best supper, if you will, will pale according to the food that you're going to get when you get to heaven. Yeah, you're going to have the food that angels have to eat. Yeah, well, they ate on earth when they came down here. They ate. Well, they they they, they didn't just uh, you know uh, 
<laughs> exist on air. <laughs> they didn't eat air sandwiches. They had to eat. So when you get to heaven, you're going to be able to eat. Because some people will say, well, okay, I'm going to miss my, uh, my uh, black angus or something or other like that. Uh, no, you're not. You're going to have something better than black angus, if you will. Okay, <clears throat> you're going to have water, too. That, you, do you realize there's water in heaven? <laughs> yeah. There's water. There's uh, food. There's fruit. There, there, there are vegetables. Yeah. So if you're a veget a vegan, they call it, yeah, it's going to be there for you, yeah. Or if you like large steaks, well, you know what, you're going to have an everlasting body, so it won't, you won't have to worry about uh, getting some uh, dreaded uh, 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 disease or something because you ate too much. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now <clears throat> we're going to talk about. Something in the Bible, because sometimes you know, sometimes we preachers we get to talking. Have you ever heard of a preacher that didn't talk enough? <clears throat> yeah, basically preachers talk. Uh, I wouldn't say they talk too much, <clears throat> but they're very uh, vociferous, if you will. Notice <clears throat> verse four: Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house of the lineage of David. <clears throat> and he had to go to Bethlehem to be counted, if you will. Now, today, we don't have to go any place to be counted. They come to your house. How many people you got living here? Four, three, two, yeah. <clears throat> they come to where you are, the, the, the uh, censor takers. Censor takers. Notice. He, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife. In other words, betrothed means that they were engaged to be married, okay, who was with child. And somebody might say, let's put a period there. She's already pregnant and they're getting married, Dr. Ray. Well, that's not that unusual, if you will. Today, yes, there are many uh, couples, yeah, <clears throat> who have come together before they get married. Uh, I remember seeing on tel my wife watches something on television about uh, people getting married, and in some of those weddings, the, the the child, the child of the of the wedding couple, were there at the wedding. So therefore, you know that that child had been born before <clears throat> they got married. Okay. And here, Mary is pregnant, and uh, she's betrothed to Joseph. You know, when you read that, you said, okay, how, who is her, who's the baby's father then? Okay, we're going to find out. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. In other words, she was like nine months pregnant when they went into uh, a, 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 a Bethlehem. Okay, and uh, notice verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son, implying that she had more than one son. Yeah, but Jesus was the firstborn in her family. In my family, I'm the firstborn. Now, in Israel, the, the firstborn had certain privileges, like uh, when the, the uh, wills were read and all of the, the things that their parents had was handed out, the firstborn got a double portion. I believe it was a double portion went to the firstborn. Now, I I haven't seen that double portion. I haven't seen that personally, that double portion coming to me. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it, th things change, you know. We're in sort of a, a, an advanced, if you will, quote unquote, advanced culture. <laughs> okay. I didn't get my double portion. Notice. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths. Clothing. What's a swaddling cloth? Well, swaddling clothing actually. They buried people with swaddling cloth because they could. Ra it's a wrapping, really, rather than a blanket. It's not really a blanket, but it's a wrapping where they wrap the the baby up. Now, the, the reason why they use swaddling, one of the reasons that is why they use swaddling cloth, is because they wanted to keep the baby's limbs and everything <coughs> growing straight. Have you ever seen bow legged, uh, <laughs> bow, -legged. <coughs> bow legged, if you will, people? Yeah, their legs are bored and something or other, uh, so so forth like that. <clears throat> well, that could be avoided if they had wrapped them in swaddling clothes. And Mary, of course, and Joseph was aware of this, and Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. It kept their arms straight, their legs straight, <clears throat> their heads uh, were were shaped, and everything by the swaddling clothes. Okay, <clears throat> notice. 
And they laid him in a manger. Well, somebody asked me once, well, Dr. Ray, what's a manger? You know, unless you uh, have been around farms and so forth like that, perhaps you wouldn't even know what a manger is, right? Uh, okay, well, uh, let me explain what a manger is. Uh, an actual manger is where they fed the the the, uh, the animals. Yeah, I, I started to say cow, but they, there were all various other animals that uh, they fed from the uh, from the manger. Okay, they would put uh, oats and uh, corn and uh, uh, whatever the the, the, the animal was going to eat was placed in the man uh, uh, a manger. Now a manger could be some mangers were larger than others. Some were big long troughs, but some were little small things also because they had some small smaller yeah animals that had to eat out of the Jesus is was placed in a smaller manger if you will. <clears throat> Many times they would have uh, hay in the, in the manger also, you know, for and, and where Jesus was placed, you know, it was uh, comfortable, you know, you wouldn't have anything sticking in his back or anything like that in the manger. Okay. <clears throat> and laid them in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Why was there no room for them in the inn? Anybody know why? Because they got there late. You know, Mary was pregnant. They couldn't just get on a, a large running fast camel and get to Bethlehem. It took, it took them more time than it did perhaps many other people who were not in, in, in not pregnant. Yes. Notice verse Notice verse 8, if you will. <clears throat> this is kind of important also because God wanted people to know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, notice here. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. <clears throat> now, you know, the flock they're talking about a sheep. And sheep are kind of, you know, if you don't watch them all the time, they just wander off. They just go here, there, wherever, you know. And if one sheep wanders off, well, the whole herd might wander off behind them. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, you had to keep watch over them day and night. You couldn't just say, okay, it's dark, so they ain't going no place. You know, they're snoring. You can't do that with sheep. So these shepherds had to keep watch all the time. Now, <clears throat> that word shepherd, if you will, in the Greek language, is poimen. For, for the word shepherd. Shepherds are normally the same thing in our Greek or, or in our culture. Yeah. A shepherd would be considered to be, even in the, the, the 2,000 years ago, a shepherd, perhaps, and they didn't have pastors then, did they? But a shepherd would be a pastor. If you're a pastor, you're a shepherd. Yeah. And remember what Jesus told, this was 2,000 years ago. He told Peter, feed my sheep. Remember? Uh, uh, feed my lambs. In other words, when uh, when you're a newborn, and you, you, you've recently become a, a born again Christian. Well, you need to be fed. Yeah, fed what? If somebody said, "Okay, give me a steak. I got to give me a, a hamburger or something or other like that to eat." That's what he was talking about. He was talking about uh, the, the Word of God. Feed my sheep the my word. Yeah. Feed them my word. Feed it to them. How do you feed somebody the word of God? Yeah? <clears throat> well, you preach the gospel. You teach the word. Yeah? If you are a pastor, you are, by definition, also a teacher. Yeah? That's what your job is, to teach. And not many pastors get involved in all kinds of other things, you know, in business and money and so forth like that, you know. That's not what their job is. Their job is to feed the sheep. Feed them what? The Word of God, yeah? Okay, David. Remember David? David was a shepherd. He kept the sheep, yes? And his job was to put his life on the line for the sheep. Guess what? That's what a pastor is supposed to do today. Put his life on the line protecting the sheep. Not the sheep protecting the pastor, yeah, but the pastor protecting the sheep. Notice. <clears throat> okay. It's, they were in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And notice verse 9. I'm in Luke chapter 2, verse 9, in case you're driving down the freeway. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Now, have you ever seen an angel? Yeah. Well, in dreams, I've seen angels, not uh, in person. I've never seen an angel in person. Someone said, well, Dr. Ray, do you want to see an angel in person? Not particularly. <laughs> if these uh, shepherds were afraid, well, perhaps 
I would be afraid also. Yeah. God doesn't want to scare us, as it, as, as it were, right, by sending angels all around. Now, if God God chooses to send an angel, like he did with Miriam, Mary, remember, he sent an angel, uh, that angel appeared to Mary in person. In other words, his name was Gabriel, in case you're wondering who, who that uh, 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 angel's name was. Now, there are billions of stars out there in, in, in the sky. God has perhaps as many angels, and he knows them all by name. Yeah, every angel has a name. They're not none, none, none personal individuals. Yeah, they have names. They're personal to God. <clears throat> Remember the, the I, I want to say the worst angel, but the the, the, the the angel that that fell and led all the other angels with him. His name was Lucifer when he was in heaven. Okay, and behold, an angel of the Lord appeared and stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Light is what that glory was, the Shekinah glory of God, light, if you will, or in the Greek language. Okay, notice verse 10. Then the angel said to them, notice, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you Good tidings of great joy. In other words, I got something good for you, right? I got the euangelion, the gospel, the good news, if you will. Euangelion is a Greek word for good news. That's why the angel was bringing good news to these shepherds, right? Somebody asked me once for Dr. Ray, why did God decide to reveal the birth to shepherds? Well, <clears throat> perhaps... You know what? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But perhaps it was because of the fact of the matter is that shepherds were there there at the precise time. Their timing was, was right, and they were close by Bethlehem, right? And they could go there and see the babe. Remember, when the shepherd went in, and we're going to see that in a moment, he was a baby, not like when the wise man went and he was a year, maybe two years old. Notice verse 11. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. Notice, Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now, he was a Savior not just for Israel, but for the whole world. Remember? He's going to save the whole world through Israel. Yeah, the... the, the, the uh, Salvation came to the, the, the nation of Israel, right? To the Jewish nation, if you will. Notice. And this will be the sign. Notice I said the word Simeon is the Greek word for sign. And this will be the sign to you. <clears throat> Notice. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. You know, how many babies are you going to find wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger? Even in Bethlehem, where all those people had congregated there to pay their taxes or to be counted, yeah? But the only one that you would find in Bethlehem in a manger, now mangers are located where? In stables, yeah, where cows are or, or where animals are is where that was. He's going to be lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. That, that identification would fit only one child there in Bethlehem. <clears throat> okay, notice and suddenly there was with the angel, that was probably Gabriel also, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, now, what is the heavenly host? You know, somebody said, who's the heavenly host, Dr. Ray? Who, who, are, who were those? Were they other angels? Or they, were, they, uh, were they believers who were there? And I, my heavenly host in my definition or, or, or understanding, what would have been other angels, yeah? <clears throat> Notice what these angels were doing. They were praising God, okay? That's what we're going to do. You should be praising God now, shouldn't you? Or when you get to heaven, you're definitely going to be praising Him. As a matter of fact, they're going to have to stop you, yeah? Notice. Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. Notice, we haven't had that peace too long, have we? As I recall, we've had war after 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 war. Now, I could go on infinitus, ad infinitus, right, on wars. 
because there hasn't been a decade that I can think of when there wasn't a war. Yeah, counting up yourself. Yeah, in every decade there's been a war of some kind. As a matter of fact, there's always been a war, as far as I can remember. Somebody said, well, how old are you, Dr. Ray? Do you remember all these wars? No, I don't remember all those wars, but I, I read of them. I know the history of them. Yeah, World War One, World War Two, Korea, uh, uh, Vietnam, or uh, even if you're only twenty, yeah, if you're twenty-five, then or something rather like that, you know, you've known about several wars, right? Well, guess what? There were hundreds and thousands of wars before that. But notice what the angel said: "Glory to God in the highest, and on earth what peace, good will taught men." Okay. Okay. Now we've gone away from this, haven't we? <laughs> no. So he said, "Well, the angel got it mixed up, yeah. We we had nothing but wars." Notice verse fifteen. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, "They're going to they're getting together. They're going to do something, right? Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing." That has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. They knew that those angels came from the Lord, right? Not from the devil. You know, a lot of people that must be the devil, right? Okay. And they came with haste. They were running. And found Mary and Joseph and the babe. Notice, not young child, but a babe. Okay, I know that babe nowadays have other connotations, if you will. Baby is what they're talking about. Lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying, which was told them concerning this child. In other words, they went out as missionaries, if you will, or evangelists. They were evangelizing, and Jesus was only a baby at the time, and they were evangelizing already. Notice verse 18. And those who heard though at all those who heard it marveled that those things which were told them by the shepherds. In other words, they must have believed the shepherds, right? You know, that old shepherd out there, you know, he smells like, like a, a sheep. What does a shepherd know? Yeah. Well, they believed it because they marveled at what the shepherds had told them. Now, <clears throat> we're going to find out some more about this uh, in a moment, but I need to mention who I am in case you're wondering who is that preacher. My name is Dr. Ray. Okay. We uh, we have a church that's located at 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California. When I say we, God's church, you know, there's only one church. There are a lot of fellowships, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California, we have a service there every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. sharp, Yeah. So if you're coming, be on time because we start on time. You know, the, the Bible talks about timeliness. It says, in the fullness of time, God sent his only begotten son. Yeah? For what purpose? To save us, right? He didn't do it ahead of time. He didn't do it behind time. Now, some people say, well, we'll start, you know, we'll get going here sooner or later. But, you know, don't worry about it. Be patient. Yeah? Well, you're supposed to start on time. Yeah? God is a timely God, right? Because we needed him when he came. Not, he didn't come late. He, 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 you know, you he, he heard this saying, well, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Oh, he's right on time. Yeah. He's a timely God. Yes. Okay. So we should be, being his children, yeah, we should be timely people also. Not just show up whenever we can. My name is Dr. Ray, and I'm out this of time. has been a blessing to you and your family or has helped you in any way, please feel free to write to us and pray for us. Remember also, we need and appreciate your financial support. Please send your financial gifts and love offerings to Dr. Ray Winston at P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. That's Dr. Ray Winston, P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. You also may call Dr. Ray at area code 310-559-8320 or 800-747-8320. Remember also, God loves a cheerful giver.